Yeah, let, let's just do a real quickie on my my twelve hundred dollar thing. Okay. So when the when the uh, the thieves sent us a check uh, when they were trying to destroy the economy in March or April or May or something like that, they sent my wife and I a, a check for twenty four hundred dollars as part of the CARES Act or whatever. And so we just held on to the check. We're going to end up framing it just as a as an example to other people that hey, you don't accept stolen money. It ain't the right thing to do. And and you know just to set an example. Well, this time. We just got this unknown twelve hundred dollar deposit to our bank account, and we don't want that dirty money. So then, this is the the challenge that we have to deal. Kind of like the saw blades and the the three D printer, except this one's even tougher. There are one hundred and forty three million taxpayers in the U S. and we have twelve hundred dollars. We need to split up and get back to all of those people. Well, actually, it didn't come from the taxpayers. It came from your kids. They're going to be paying for this, paying the Federal Reserve back for the money that was borrowed to send me this check. So who who do we give this 1200 bucks back to? If, if, do we just write it in an envelope? Do we send it to the IRS and say, oh, you accidentally gave this to me. We want you to have it back. Well, I don't want my enemy having 1200 bucks. So then do I donate it to what I think is good? Well, stolen money. I can't donate stolen money. It remains just like a, what was the awesome video you did? It's still the stolen Ferrari that belongs to Bob or whatever. Um, it's still Bob's property. It is still 143 millionth years. You are, so what do we do? You, along with every other sort of USD dollar owner, is one of the victims that you're talking about wanting to comp compensate. Like your money mm -hmm. is being devalued to write that check, just like everyone else's money is being devalued to, to get mm -hmm. the checks, the deposits that they're getting. Yep. Um, so the, I guess the first question, the first question I have even more, before talking about that is, you know, are, are you a net tax victim or not? And I suspect that you are as a successful business owner, uh, you have, uh, a significant level of tax extortion uh, that you deal with every year. And so uh, if, if you took that money for yourself as restitution, uh, are you still a net tax victim after that tiny amount? I, you don't have to answer. It's your personal financial details, but I suspect that you are still very much a net tax victim. Uh, <laughs> and so um, I would take, I would take that property back as a small, tiny fraction of restitution against uh, all the extortion that is uh, uh, affected upon you. And then I say, and if you're not a next tax, tax victim, then I think the equation is different. Like if, if you um, aren't extorted much and you haven't been stolen from by, by the government much, then maybe the equation looks different. It's a case by case ethical thing, ethics function at the individual level. Uh, if you are a net tax victim, then get your restitution however you can. The only thing I don't like, and I'm not, <clears throat> and I haven't thought about this enough to tell if it's a, um, uh, an aesthetic thing or an actual ethical thing is like supporting more uh, whether it's right for a libertarian to or a voluntarist whatever to support more stimulus checks going out um, as a way to get more restitution because and I know I'm on the opposite side of this issue from where you were talking so this is an interesting discussion but um, if you are I, I don't think that that is I certainly think it's it's bad aesthetics. I think it's shitty behavior. It might even be, um, it might even come with victims because you're, you're asking for everyone else's currency to be devalued. Even people, you know, that don't have a say in these systems yet. So I, I, I think that that is not supporting those is not ethical, but if somebody is putting money into, if the thief that stole from you is handing money is put is shoving money into your wallet. Um, I don't see. I'm going to argue. Please. I'm going to argue that Please. that dollar bill that he left on my doorstep ended in serial number two, two, one. That particular dollar wasn't the one he stole from me. The one he stole from me, the one that Sam stole from me, he already went off and dropped bombs on brown people or did whatever he does with money. That that money is gone. This dollar bill ending in serial number two, two, one. That dollar bill is a loan that your children, without their permission, are going to have to pay back. That's new money. 
kind of like Social Security. No, it's not sitting in that piggy bank waiting to be paid out. It's gone. If you accept it, you are saying, Patrick's children, you need to pay this bill because I, I wanted to have this 1200 bucks. When, when you um, handed over your tax extortion, which is what I prefer to say rather than pay taxes, uh, when, when you handed over your tax extortion, did you care about or track the serial numbers? Did you hand them cash or did you write them checks which transferred um, fungible um, number currencies from one computer in a bank to the computer in the bank of the government? I, the latter. I, I think you're trying. I, I think you're, um, you're taking something that was not. You, you didn't even care. Like, like if I had a framed dollar bill that I cared about, and that was extorted from me, then I would care about getting that dollar bill back as restitution, um, and you know, m maybe maybe extra because that one was special. But most people treat fiat Fed bucks as fungible currency. That represents, uh, you know, the value of a dollar, not the specific serial numbered bill, right? Right, and I just meant that as an uh, as an analogy. But that that money that we paid ta uh, that we were extorted, oh, I uh, see. that that was a different set of money. That money's gone. It wasn't pulled out of the piggy bank of, of the thieves' piggy bank. The thieves are now saying, "Hey." We plan to tax Patrick's children for the next 80 years and make them our livestock. Um, and we're looking to spend that money already and we want you to be on our side. Will you accept it? And it, feel free to, it's not gonna hurt us. We're just gonna send the bill to Patrick's children. Is the bill to your children or is it just to everyone that owns US dollars the moment that it's in Everyone. Right, everyone. In including you including me, including my children. So yeah, I would definitely deserve one 300 millionths of it. Like that part I would deserve. But one, the fact that- Sorry, go ahead. But the fact that your children 23 years from now are working really hard and wondering, these little tiny micro payments that I'm making now, they're going to pay the Federal Reserve. Well, what did the Federal Reserve do? And say, so, well, Federal Reserve bombed a bunch of brown people. They gave Shepard 1200 bucks and they built really crappy roads. Well, I don't really want to be responsible. So your kid's like, wait a minute. Why, why, did I, why am I paying off this dude that you gave 1200 bucks? Huh? I shouldn't have to pay that. Well, they'd have a very good point. Uh, I, I, there's some distinctions here. I think I can, I think I can push back. So um, the only people affected by inflation are, are, are the current owners of dollars. So most children don't really have any dollars that are sizable enough to worry about. People that don't own dollars are not infected are, are not affected at all by inflation. And there's another ethical discussion, which I think we can like file over in the, maybe let's do next column, which is, um, is inflation even, uh, a, a, an aggression, a property crime. Um, it's not like you own the concept called us dollars and have rightful control over it. And like, like in a free society, if somebody could print more pieces of paper. Anyway, that's a side discussion. <laughs> All right. um, so if you are one, if you are receiving one 300 millionth of uh, um, a stimulus that was sent to 300 million people, then the amount of that check is one 300 millionth of the stimulus. Uh, and so if, you, if your currency is being def, uh, inflated by one 300 millionth of the total, then the compensation for that is one 300 millionth of the total. The only, dis I don't think it's 300 million. I think it would be the, 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 the number would be the dollar, the number of dollar owners, um, not mm -hmm. 300 million. Um, and so the only fuzzy overlap in that number set would be like the, the later, the, the 16 year olds that um, maybe don't get stimulus checks but also own fiat. So maybe, maybe that's the problem, but um, like you're not, I guess, I guess the summary is this, like the inflation that the government is doing to the dollars is not affecting grandchildren. And, and here's the part two, part two is that the debt that the government accrues is not rightfully owed. It's not rightful debt of grandchildren. It's invalid debt. It, so uh, it, the government is not damaging grandchildren because they're running up debt that your grandchildren are not rightfully responsible for. Now the government might hold them responsible for it. China might try and hold them responsible for it, 
but that's on the government in China, um, and that's invalid debt. Okay, so there, there you go. What, what say thee? I, I, I wasn't, and inflation is certainly a way that we're from, and as you say, that'd be an argument for another day, but I was speaking strictly of how the Federal Reserve works. Okay. They, they loan money to, to a government, and then the government makes their uh, slaves pay it back over amount of pay the interest back over amount of time. And I completely agree that the, the creature is a horrible one. And it's, I, I get, I get that that's bad. And, and some of the comments, I completely agree. It's not borrowing money. It is all violent, horrible. However, in essence, what is being said is this is coming from a loan that was the Federal Reserve loan and the Federal Reserve is going to make your children and all the other children forever pay back the interest on this money. And do I want to participate in that? Or do I want to step back and say, no, I'm not going to not going to participate. I think the principal thing is to say no. I I don't see the, the connection to the to the victim. Maybe I'm missing something obvious. Because there is no valid debt there. Like, the government holds no debt. Even though the government lied to China and said that they're taking out debt in my name, it's it's not valid. I have nothing to do with that. They can, they can, they can defraud China all they want, and it has nothing to do with me. Um, I, I'm not in any way more damaged when they defraud China un, you know, in my name to a greater extent. Like, China should know better. That's on China. Um like I disavow, but, I disavow that debt. And if China was smart, they would care about me disavowing that debt. Like if they were ethical, I should say, not smart. If they were, if they were principled, they would care that I disavow that debt. I think that if you accept that the goodies now for that debt, then you're somewhat culpable for the debt. So if if they say, "Hey, Shepard, do you want twelve hundred bucks?" We think that you and your everybody's going to owe us for the rest for forever more and i accept it then i think i'm taking on some responsibility i don't think that a dozen people can get together in a room in the back of the the building and say hey shepherd owes us money and so do patrick's kids no that's not legitimate but if they come around to the front and say hey here's 1200 bucks you want it i should probably say is that stolen money or did you earn is it clean money or is it dirty money and if I accept dirty money, I think I'm encouraging them. Let, let's let's take it out of the realm of nebulous um, taxes and and inflation and and, uh, and government debt, international government debt. Let's let's just go down to the person because this usually clarifies it. Maybe this will help me. Um, and maybe I don't understand your argument yet. So you are um, a person that is victimized by a local thug, and he steals let's say a thousand dollars from you. And uh, so he owes you a debt of at least a thousand dollars, maybe two because of the two X, you know, the two X uh, restitution rule that Walter Block argues for, which is rooted in common law. But anyway, so the, the thief own, owes a debt to you of at least a thousand dollars. And next month, the thief comes to you and uh, shoves a thousand dollars in your wallet. Um, you are saying that it would be unethical to take that money if that thief stole that particular thousand dollars from somebody else? How I see it is that the thief that stole the original thousand dollars went out and spent it. it. That money is completely gone. And then the thief comes back to me and says, hey, I'm going to give you a portion of that back to help you out. Cause I'm a good guy. And then I say, well, wait a minute, you blew all of that on, on uh, hookers and meth. Like I, you don't have that money anymore. How are you going to give me this money? And he says, Oh, don't worry about it. I went out and I forged some documents and I took out a loan. You don't even have to pay it back. I'm going to make Patrick pay it back here. Take it. I think I should say, well, no, that's not good, clean money. And I know we can go down a whole rabbit hole there too of how closely do you examine the the cleanliness of the dollar bill that's incoming, but it seems in this case that it, it's very clear to those who have read the creature from Jekyll, 
the creature from Jekyll Island, it's very clear how the Federal Reserve and, and central banks and governments do their thing. And so in the, the wonderful, more simplistic example you gave, which does clarify it for me as well, it's not that thieves thousand dollars that he's given back. He is going to go steal from other people to give me the money. So I should say no to it. It's not going to stop him from doing the bad thing. He's still going to do it. But so, I stood on principle and said no. So he didn't tell you where it was from, and he didn't ask you uh, it, to accept it. He just stuck it in your wallet. But I, if I have a way to go track him down and give it back and say, hey, man, I don't want your dirty money. But what if as a, I'm on the way to give it to him, I go buy a fundraiser. So people are buying filet mignon steaks for homeless people and they need a $1,200 donation. Should I really say, no, I wouldn't, I was going to donate to you guys, but I need to give this to the thief who's going to go and, and spend it on meth and, and hookers. I don't know. But it seems to me as though I, I have somewhat of a responsibility if I know that the person has never earned an honest dollar in their life and they're trying to give me dollars. Well, I know they're dishonest dollars. They're, they're bad, bad things. So I think the disanalogy and educate me if I'm not getting it, but I think the pro the problem in the scenario that you laid out with the thief going and um, taking out a fraudulent loan in somebody else's name is that um, is that the that you're damaging or being a co-conspirator in a crime against the person whose fraudulent loan is being taken out. Like that the the that person has nothing I to agree. do with it. That person has nothing to do with it. It's a fraudulent loan. It's an invalid loan. Um, like, like, uh, let me see, figure out how to say this. So if I, as the person he was fraudulently using as collateral for this loan, um, whose name or reputation or credit score or whatever he was using for collateral for this loan, um, what damages would I have against him? Like he, he has affected my bank account. Not at all. Like he, he is, um, you know, he used my social security number to take out a loan, let's say. Like, m maybe that would affect my credit score, but my credit score isn't property, and you'd expect the credit agency to have, um, in a free market especially, you'd expect the credit agency to have uh, ways of handling bad credit items. But um, I don't think Patrick, in that scenario, is a victim. So I don't, like, I don't think that, like maybe yeah, the yeah, bank that they're point. taking out the loan from is a victim because that's what it is. I'm making your argument for you. So the victim that they're taking, you're making a victim of the bank by being a co-conspirator in the fraud crime against them, maybe by being a beneficiary of the money. Wow. Guys, this but channel's the, nerdy it, as hell. I hope you're having is, fun. <laughs> and a big shout out to your audience. The easiest, most schmucky, cliche comment that could have been made that has not been made by a single person is, hey, man, you can send it to me. And not a single person has done that. And that speaks now to the will. brilliance of the people who follow you. Yeah, exactly. Here they come. Here's my address, man. I know how you can get rid of it. I'll do something good with it. <laughs> if the victim in that case is the bank who's being, you know, you're, you're benefiting from a fraudulent loan. Uh, then the question becomes, like, when we scale that back up to real life with um, intergovernmental debt bonds, um, you'd be making a victim of China, <laughs> which I'm not sure we should be too concerned about. Uh, so what, what are your thoughts? I don't think it's an honest bank. And, and I took that, that I take that into account when I think oh. I shouldn't take the 12, 1200. So if it was really, truly uh case and Patrick's local bank, and it was you guys that would be hurt, you're doing everything honest, no fractional reserve. You guys are completely above board. Then that you'd be the victim, but we're talking central bank here. We're talking, the money is being invented from nowhere and the obligation is being put on someone else. Now, I do completely agree that that your children are not agreeing to be victims to that. However, even though they didn't take out the loan, somebody else did it fraudulently in their name, the loan shark is going to come and break their legs anyway. That's on the, the loan shark, sharks though. Are, like, well, or a bank, the Federal Reserve, if you don't pay, if they don't pay what they're told they need to pay for the rest of their lives, they're going to have somebody, the IRS is going to come and break their legs on behalf of the Federal Reserve. But 
it's so, not it's not like if the government didn't take out more debt that they would stop taxing people. Like I don't think there's a connection there. It's not like correct. they're ta- it's not like they're correct. taxing people in re- in in a ratio related at all to the amount of debt they have. It's just they tax people and I agree. disconnected, right? Yeah, I agree. Okay. All right, who do we have? Who who's on the call? Uh Dan. Hey Dan, thanks for calling in. What's up? What do you want to talk about? Yeah, um I was curious. Um and I've actually thought a lot about this topic in the past. Um, and my opinion is if you can get whatever you can from these assholes, uh, you try to take it. Um, I know that may not sound very nice or altruistic or whatever, but that's how I feel about it. <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm not concerned with you calling them assholes. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. We're good with that, Dan. <laughs> awesome. Good, glad to hear it. Um, but I was curious, uh, say in that situation you were discussing uh, a few minutes ago, um, if the thief were to steal that thousand dollars or what have you, or whatever amount of money, and then go and buy a boat, um, how would that, and would you then own that boat? Or if something along those lines involving other people, how would that which would the would the visual victim then own the boat or would they be uh would they be deserving or would they deserve their thousand dollars back how do you how do you think that would be dealt with where that should be dealt with? dan I, by the way have you have you good. seen the video that patrick did three or four years ago i think in which uh it did a very crude uh animation with a red corvette i believe it was have you seen that video i just saw it a few days ago Actually, I I have seen several of Patrick's old stuff, but not that one, not that one in particular. No, there are two it videos. It was awesome. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I don't no, want no, to no, interrupt you, you while you're complimenting me. Please continue. <laughs> so Patrick is just wonderful. And uh, <laughs> no, no, the video kind of walked through it and it, it kind of, it helped illuminate it for me. And I think that the three of us are probably on the same page, but it really did help mm-hmm. clarify. And I think what you're saying is absolutely true. The thief goes and buys the boat. That boat now belongs to, it doesn't belong to the thief. It's not his property. Uh, but right. then what if the boat, what if it's only a 10th of the cost of the boat and then what each, each person gets a, a 10th of a year share of to use the boat. I don't know. I, it gets complicated. And then what about the original owner of that boat? How does, how does that factor in? Does he get the boat back and all that stuff? And I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll go watch that video, but yeah, it can be very complex. If there's one thing I've gotten good at is talking about the same things over and over. So I'm happy to do it here. Yeah. Uh, so the, the videos, yeah. there's two videos. One is called why is property. And that's kind of like the beginning mm-hmm. primer. And it's, it's like a stupid animation video with a voiceover and it's been pretty successful in, in comparison to our other videos. So we did more. We did another one called, um, Uh, I forgot what the name of the video was. It's something like Jordan's story. If you search my channel for Jordan's story, you'll get it. It's like the Mm -hmm. second series, second property related video in a playlist. And it tells the story of exactly the thing that you're talking about, where um, when you have a thief that comes along and steals money from somebody and then goes and uses that money to pay somebody to give them their car, you know, buy their car uh, or uses that money to pay somebody to build a house uh, who is the rightful owner of all the property involved at the end of the day? And the video walks through step by step by step with each round of theft and fraud. And then it, it summarizes with, okay, at the end of this round of theft and fraud, who owns all the property? And it makes the point, and the, the core point to how property functions is that property does not transfer when fraud or coercion is involved. The rightful ownership of property does not transfer when fraud or coercion is involved. So if somebody fraudulently gets your money, uh, then that money is still rightfully yours. And if they go and they hand that money to somebody else in exchange for a car, well, that money is still rightfully yours, even though it's now possessed by the person that thought that they were selling the thief their car. So you're cl- you still have a right to that money. It that money still is yours because the, the title, the proper ownership of that money, has not transferred 
It's just gotten more and more messy and hard to track, which is why as voluntarists, we don't like coercion and aggression because it makes everything way more complicated and way more messy and hard to figure out. And it screws up. Like it, once you go through enough rounds, and this is what we kind of said at the end of the video. And we, we talked about the government as being the cult, the uh, culprit of this is that once you have enough fraud and theft and aggression involved in a situation, everyone loses. It just becomes so messy that you can't track anything. Uh, everyone is, is, is uh, just so confused about where the property that was stolen, uh, you know, five layer cakes deep of where their property is. It just becomes lost. That's why aggression is bad. That's why we don't like it because uh, it, it screws everything up. Uh, so yeah, the video, I forgot what the full title is, but it's something, something Jordan's story. Uh, and that, that'll illustrate it for you. Does that make sense? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and then that, that's just the case. It's complex enough when it's just a few individuals involved in their theft and fraud. But then when then you couple that with the state and the millions of people involved, that transaction is just shot to hell. And we have no way to really properly, you know, if you want to, I, I'm using the we here, my bad, but um, <laughs> there's no real good catch, way good catch. to return that money to its proper owner. And, um, and I'm sure you probably agree on this point as well, but like the state doesn't really technically own anything according to libertarian voluntarist uh, property principles. Am I, I'm, am I correct in assuming that you both agree with that? If the state doesn't really own anything? The state rightfully Amen. owns nothing. And this, I was going to respond to this. Yeah. Somebody made this comment in the chat earlier that you're asking about what, if the government owns a property, then whose name is on the deed? Government rightfully owns nothing because everything they acquired was through fraud or coercion, which means that anything they yeah. possess was possessed invalidly. It's still owned by the original people. Yeah, so I, that was a long way of agreeing right. with you. Shepard, do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I think I think you said yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So and Dan, and I that thank you for being a thinker. To <laughs> illustrate my lack of guilt over taking whatever I can get from these people, <laughs> because like I, I yes I know like you know I'm I may very well be a victim of not only the state but maybe even somehow my grandparents and my parents contributing. Okay, but uh, I just I don't really have any guilt over getting what I can.